hello there and welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited about today's video. I'm gonna share five of my top lessons that I've learned in five years of being in business. And when I look back at it, five years, like, wow, it feels like a long time. Um, five years doesn't maybe sound like such a long time, but I have learned so much on the way. And, you know, right now I am working on this book and I, in the last year, pivoted this whole channel and everything I do really back to knitting, which is where it all really, <laughs> it all really started for me. And it just made me think also about how sometimes, or easily, and my, my, me, <laughs> for sure, um, I often get caught up in just thinking about the next thing and the future, and um, it just feels like the kind of the things that are on your mind, the things that you want to do, they never stop. So sometimes I think it's just nice to pause and sit down and think a bit about what you've actually learned and reflect. So I thought uh, I would do that with you. This video is sponsored by Taylor Brands, which is a platform and a tool which is something that I would have benefited from so, so much uh, when I was starting out, but even just kind of also recently. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about them more in this video. So stick around. Uh, you are definitely going to want to hear it if you are thinking about starting your own thing. This was back in 2017. I feel the biggest lesson I learned was Follow your enthusiasm. It's a lesson that I still think is one of the most important ones that I've ever learned and something that I think is very important when you're gonna start your own business or you want to become self-employed and create uh, a life around the thing that you want to do. And most often that's something creative and maybe something that you aren't currently doing in your current job or you have this dream essentially. Um, and this is something that I keep coming back to time and time again, because it is so easy to get swept away by noise out there about also um, things that you think you should be doing or how you should be doing, because of course you are worried and you want your thing to be a success and you don't want to fail. So it makes sense to listen to outside sources and see what's out there and follow others and see like, oh, they're doing this, it works really well for them, maybe I should be doing that. My experience um, and what has always worked best for me and what has always led to the most opportunities and success has always been when I've been very genuine and followed my own enthusiasm. When I follow the thing that I'm really, like actually genuinely curious and passionate about in that moment. So it's not like in that moment that I thought about, okay, now I'm really, for example, back in 2017, I was very interested in Instagram and I was very inter interested in trying to make, become an Instagrammer, like a content creator, like these influencers that I would see out there. That felt so embarrassing and cringe to say out loud. And it felt like, you know, I had back then a couple of hundred followers, like a normal Instagram account. So I was so, so far away from ever making that a reality. But when I was really genuine with my enthusiasm and the thing that, you know, I would listen to podcasts, I would be on the platform all the time, I would research about it. Um, and of course, I mean, in that also came photography, like I was very into photography and kind of sharing my photos on Instagram. Um, even though at the moment I was using Instagram more to sell my handmade knits, but I realized like mm, maybe photography and figuring out my own photography style is actually what I like more. And then I followed that enthusiasm. Did I make any money the first year? No. Did I lose money probably on it? Yes, <laughs> because I didn't, I only had part-time jobs, so I was very poor. <laughs> but I decided that I'm gonna follow my enthusiasm and the thing that I'm now really passionate about, even though it felt maybe kind of ridiculous and maybe naive and maybe a dream that would never um, fulfill, get fulfilled. Um, so kind of like a crazy thing. And the thing, uh, now, because now it feels like it's five years ago, I've gone through kind of all that, um, but it was really hard and it took a long time and a lot of patience and a lot of sort of trying to just like keep calm and not get swept away by all these 
other things, all these noises, all this advice out there. Well, I think it's good to, to listen to advice, but then I think you still have to do it your own way and follow your own enthusiasm, what you're really interested in that moment. That's not to say that you have to know where it's going to take you and figure it all out and start to overthink, because I think overthinking and wanting to have the answer and wanting the certainty that, oh, this is going to work, that is something that definitely held me back a lot in the beginning. Even with, when I started to then share photos on Instagram, I got super obsessed with like, you know, in the bio in Instagram, like what should I write in the bio text? Like, what is my style? What is this? And I had things like blissful, blissful melancholy from Scandinavia or something like that. Like I kept, or I, I spent so much time thinking about like, what are the perfect words? What is it that I'm doing? And I think that's all fine. But at some point I feel like, you know, it's more important that you spend energy and time on doing the thing than like thinking about what the thing is <laughs> and trying to somehow construct the thing with, before you even know really what it's going to be. Because then when time went on and I did more photos, I kind of discovered my style. Somebody at one point said like, oh, this is like magical realism. And then when I saw those words, magical realism, I was like, oh yeah, that is my thing. That is totally my thing. Then I shared more photos. Then somebody said, oh, I love your photos where you put flowers in your boots or something like that. And I was like, oh, maybe that's something I should do again. Then that became a thing. So the more I did and shared, the more I would get kind of feedback back and kind of start to see what it is, what I was doing. And then at some point, somebody said the word creative photography. And then I felt like, oh yeah, that is what I'm doing. Then it became more about self-portrait photography and somebody said like, oh, but you have so many self-portraits, like that's really something that I get tips and ideas from you. And it's like, oh yeah, that's also what I do. And then that kind of becomes the thing and you start to discover what the thing is. But in the beginning, if I would just sit down and try to like think like pen and paper and just like overthink it, um, that wouldn't have come because it wouldn't have been maybe genuine and organic. So. Um, I think like that overthinking and like this need to know like exactly what it's gonna be um, for me at least um, I don't think I there was really a need to spend so much time on it if I'm honest um, in the beginning another really common struggle um, I see and I also had myself was uh, when I was gonna do uh, a logo so when I had my handmade knits Oh, that felt like such a huge task, like making a logo, deciding on a name, um, then figuring out like where to have my website, like all these kind of practical things, uh, especially if you're going to like sell a product. Uh, but even if you're just like online and you want to have a portfolio or something, that kept me back a lot. And I'm so excited to talk about Taylor Brands, which are sponsoring this video because they are really a one stop shop for all these things. When you want to start your business or your brand, but you're not really sure where to start and like things like having a website or having a professional email, your domain, a logo, like all these things can feel like really huge tasks and things that might really feel like they are holding you back. So Taylor Brands, they're an AI driven platform and the way it works is you can just go in there. Uh, I have a link in the description below. You put in your brand name and then you answer a few questions about like what kind of style you like, like what fonts and if you would like to, your logo to have an icon and all these things. And then the AI tool will make some suggestions for you. It will actually make a logo for you. And this was just so much fun. <laughs> and I just love to play around with tools like this. And you don't need any skills really. It will make everything for you. You just kind of need to choose some things that you like and then you see all these suggestions. And the great thing about Taylor Brands is that they also have a tool where you can make a website super quickly. So you get it up and running. You can also get your domain from there, a professional mailbox. Then you can even get like business cards and apparel and like your own kind of t-shirts and mugs and all these cool things. And I have a super also good offer for you, which is that you can get 40% off by using the code Kutovakika YT. So that is Kutovakika YT, YT standing for YouTube. So when you put that at the checkout, you will get 40% off. And if this kind of a tool would have been, well, first of all, this affordable and available when I was starting out, I think I would definitely have done the investment because I spent so much time like researching, like using like different tools, trying to see which one was the best then. I didn't have any coding skills, so I just wanted to get it quickly up and running out there. If this is something uh, that you feel like this is holding you back, 
I can definitely, definitely recommend them. So click the link in the description below and then you can use the code KUTAVAKIKA YT at checkout to get 40% off. So I know that Instagram has gone through so many changes and I kind of, I think I have like a bit of a love and hate relationship with Instagram if I'm completely honest, because I love the community aspect. I love that I've been there for so long. So like I know a lot of people or no, but you know, like follow a lot of people that I've been following for many years. So it feels like I know them and some people that I actually know. Um, and I get really inspired when I see what other artists are doing. But ah, the negative feelings can also be like the pressure and all like these rules that you should be following to be successful on Instagram. And I think it's especially true if you're kind of trying to grow something or a brand or you have like this idea um, of something that you would like your message that you would like to spread around and just grow on the platform. And that seems to like those, uh, well, the algorithm and everything seems to have changed quite a lot recently. I would still hear go back to year one lesson, like follow your enthusiasm, not compare yourself, that is just wasted energy. And instead really make sure that you do what works for you. And that is one of the lessons that I learned through all of these years, like it always works best when you use it as a tool, that it doesn't become that you kind of um, adapt everything to the platform. I mean, sure, there are some things that you can do, like now reels are very popular. So yes, of course, spending some time and investing time in sharing reels, and maybe that will sort of boost engagement and reach and all these things. But I still feel that you should somehow be above it <laughs> and really think about the things that excite you and what you feel like sharing. And it doesn't even have to be, I feel, that deep. Like I think sometimes when I hear people talk about like, oh, you have to get clear on your why and what value are you bringing to people like and all this. And I just feel like what, like that feels like you are putting yourself on a like pedestal somehow, like somehow thinking that, oh, my job is to help people or to that I have so much to offer like as value. Um, and don't get me wrong, of course, that's great if you have things to offer and you want to be of service and all these things, like don't get me wrong. But I just mean that that can sometimes be a blocker, at least for me. Definitely it's been sometimes a blocker that when I've started to think so much like what are people expecting of me and I have to have all these like grandiose visions and like I have to know why I'm doing this. Like no, I just want to take a pretty photo of some flowers and you know my cats and share it because it brought me joy in the moment. That's it. Doesn't have to be that more deep and meaningful. At least in my opinion. I don't know. I hope this makes sense. But I think there is something in being authentic and genuine and not trying to manipulate the outcome, if you know what I mean. So instead, actually, really um, following the things that, well, in this case, like bring you joy, like with photography and with knitting, for sure, they both bring me a lot of joy. And there are things that I would do. Instagram, like no matter if Instagram was there or not. So then it's just nice to be able to share those things. I hope this made sense. I don't know. I feel like I was a little like harsh. Essentially, what I mean is that when you focus on finding that community, sharing your things and not really thinking so much about like trying to be discovered, but you instead want to discover things for yourself and share things, then that audience will follow. And when you are enthusiastic about something, um, yeah, when you do show up, I mean, of course, if you're never there, <laughs> it's never probably not gonna work so well, or at least that has been my experience. And then I've also gone through periods of times where I tried to change my style too much into something that wasn't my style. It was the style of people that I follow, that I really admired. I saw like, oh, they're growing so much. It's really working for them. Then I tried to do that. That never really worked. It always worked better when I was being honest and true to myself. Sometimes that's not really easy to say what is honest and true to yourself. But I think in the moment, you'll know when it feels like, ah, this is, this is what, this is what aligns with me. This is something that felt good. Um, and then try to get some more of that. I am so glad.
that I started this YouTube channel, it took a long time, a lot of frustration. I felt so awkward being in front of the camera, like all the tech aspects of editing and learning to edit and uh, just like getting a proper sentence out of my mouth. That was such a struggle. Here. Hello and welcome to my vlog. Today is Monday 17, 2018. And last Monday I turned 30. Yeah. Why wait when you feel that there's things in life that you want to do or that fascinate you and maybe there's some kind of a dream but maybe they feel ridiculous. A lot of things has happened in my life, um, a lot of kind of changes that have made me think about what it is that I'm supposed to do in life. Still to this day it can sometimes feel like really really sticky and I can like in my mind at the same time as I'm talking, I start to doubt everything and question things and think like, oh, but what do I have to say about this? Like, there's so much uh, uncertainty that comes with filming yourself and a whole lot of being very self-conscious. But, so there's more work, I would say, than for example on Instagram, but it's been so worth it because the comments that then I receive, um, knowing that, the things that I share actually have an impact. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, that does feel really, really, really great. And it feels really nice also now because now I've been doing it for three years. So now when I go back and see some of the old videos, I can see that progress. And I think when you see that you're progressing and you're getting better at something, that is very satisfying. At least I feel like that has been super satisfying. And also I think this YouTube channel has really brought some really great opportunities my way. And it's also, when you think about it, I started on Instagram back in 2017. I have around 130,000 followers. I started my YouTube channel three years ago and I'm closing in on like almost 200,000 followers. So you can also see there, I feel like YouTube is just like, a yes, it's more work, but I feel like it's a better return of your investment, if you can call it like that. Um, so the more time and effort I spend, yes, that's maybe a little bit more than just posting a random photo on Instagram, but I feel like it gives me so much. And it also like makes me think about kind of what is interesting to share, what are people interested in. So I feel like I'm sort of like all the time, like on the pulse and seeing what people are interested in. Um, and it just feels like more like a dialogue, even though I know like I'm speaking here to a camera, a comment below is not really maybe a dialogue, but it's still like, it feels like a more, deep and meaningful interaction than just like a DM or a comment on Instagram. So for me, I feel like it's been so worth it. Um, and I'm so glad I finally got over myself <laughs> the feeling like, oh, like this is never gonna work. And the feeling like every time I turned on the camera, just like froze and felt like, oh, I have nothing to say and just feeling super awkward. Everything gets easier once you just do it and once you put your mind to it and take it one one video or one piece at a time. Also, I should mention, uh, I have made a video where I show exactly how I edit my videos in Adobe Premiere Pro. So if this is something like the tech things feel like it's holding you back, then I'll put the video up here and also link it below. So you can see exactly how I edit these videos. It's really, it's really not that hard in the end. It just takes a little patience <laughs> to learn how to do it all, but then it's really fun. Okay, lesson number four is from year 2020. And this is the year where I really started to work on some bigger projects. So uh, this is the year that I did a photography course, my first photography course and like launched it as a digital course. Um, and I have found that for me, what really works well and what kind of balances out the social media sort of churn and this very kind of quick pace of like almost like a 24 hour cycle and then like, oh, you just feel like you have to always do more and more has been to have like these bigger projects to work on. So that was the first year, 2020, I did that. I had a bigger project. Um, and then I also launched some merchandise. So I designed my own t-shirts. And I've found since then, because that since then I've done another course as well, which was called the Self-Taught to Self-Employed Masterclass, uh, which is, if you enjoy this video, I think you would definitely like that masterclass. So it's like a whole, um, very much in the spirit of like these videos where I share everything on 
how I went from self-talk to, to self-employed by using Instagram and YouTube. Um, and it's like very in-depth and there's like workbooks and there's videos and like all this good stuff in it. And I feel like working on those bigger projects have really allowed for like more deeper and meaningful work in the midst of all this kind of social media, like day to day, like, okay, next thing and the next thing. And it's also almost made me feel like I have something bigger to strive for, um, which just for me, like the type of personality I am, that works really well. Because I've noticed that when I don't really know what's coming up next, I quickly fall into like, almost like a state of like being a little bit desperate and feeling like, oh, like there's nothing to look forward to. I can't somehow focus my energy. Like I start to get all over the place. I start to overthink and overanalyze and question everything because I get so overwhelmed <laughs> by all the choices and all the things that I could be doing. So when I then set my mind to, okay, I'm now gonna do this one digital course. It's gonna be launched on that date. It somehow gives me structure and there's like some, like a framework to work around. And right now I'm working on this knitting book and that has also been really great because of course at the same time I try to also do like other things and keep up that uh, but like just having like a bigger framework and knowing that okay I am putting all this effort and now work into this bigger thing and then hopefully also the return like the reward will be then bigger because I spent so much time and effort on something and that has also definitely been my experience like I feel with all the like the courses um, and hopefully with this book <laughs> and just like when you put in and even like with the YouTube videos the ones that I spend a lot of time editing and filming and planning and I'm really excited about and I just put that a little extra in I always feel like those are the ones that really resonate and and the same with like photography or like with anything really I feel like always um, and even if it's maybe not like immediately visible I always feel like those things still are the ones that kind of move the needle forward the most, if that makes sense. Lesson number five, 2021. Weekly to-do lists instead of day-to-day to-do -to lists. So this is a very practical lesson that I learned. Um, I love to make lists, but I always struggle with like planning and how to structure your time when you're self-employed because when, okay, maybe apart from some meetings, I rarely have like really any structure. I can decide myself, I'm my own boss, which creates a lot of uh, flexibility, yes, but also a lot of overwhelm. And sometimes it's just very difficult to know, like, uh, like I have all these things I should be doing, but I don't know where and when, and oh, and I can't, like I can't stick to a schedule. So for a long time, I would do day-to-day to-do -day to lists. Then I would feel really guilty when I wasn't able to do all those things one day, and then it would kind of pile up. So instead now, uh, and what I've started to do back in 2021, is to have weekly to-do lists. So instead I think about the week, what are the things that I want to get accomplished? Um, and then during that week, I try to get them accomplished. So then I'm not so bound to a specific day because maybe that day I just really don't feel inspired to shoot a video. So then I can push that forward or maybe the like, weather is bad <laughs> and bad light. Um, and maybe some other day I feel like really, oh, now I just want to sit and edit or, you know, write something like write a newsletter or work on something. So then I have that flexibility because I have that weekly to-do list instead. Okay, those were my five tips, but I still have one bonus tip, which I want to share and something that I have learned, which is that it will take longer than you think to get what you want. I think it's very easy to get very impatient um, and kind of discouraged if immediately it's not working out the way you hoped it would work out. And this happens to me time and time again. Uh, I often when I've launched something or I've shared something and I've really worked on something and then it just feels like, oh, but this didn't really resonate that much or maybe nothing much happened. And I've just learned over the years of doing this that many things like it takes longer than you might think or might want, but it just requires patience and persistence. And yes, it's a cliche, but not giving up, like keep coming back to it. And often also I've found that that sent then maybe something like, for example, a video that I've shared. Um, and at the moment I was really excited about it. I had worked on it. I publish it and it feels like, ah, oh, like, okay, it, it didn't do that great. Then when I come back to it, maybe a couple of months later and I go and see those numbers and it's like, oh, wow, this video has been really popular. 
that's like a very, very practical example, but I think it goes for everything. Like with building your brand and building your business and figuring out what it is, what you want to do and getting that clarity and like that finding your calling. Like it takes longer than you think. Like I thought for eight years or even more than that, <laughs> I was studying dance and thought that that was going to be my main career, my thing, my whole life. And then in just these past five years, uh, I've changed direction many times and it just takes longer than you think, I think, to find your thing. And now I feel like really drawn to like, okay, I think feel like I know what I'm doing and this is really what I'm supposed to be doing. But I don't know, maybe five years from now, maybe it has shifted again and it's something different. Even though right now it feels like really like, okay, now I have somehow found the thing that is going to be the thing. But who knows? So I just, I guess, want to leave you with the words of be patient. Um, these things take time, like overnight success rarely happens. It often takes a long time of just doing it, not really know if it's gonna lead to anything, but still keep on doing it. And when you see like those small wins and those small signs to also really honor them and realize like, okay, something is happening, even if it feels like, oh, I will never get to where I want to go. All right, those were my lessons learned. I hope you find some value in this video and that it was interesting to hear me talk about it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I would also love to hear maybe what you're starting off for, if you have something that you are gonna build and remember to also use the code KUTAWAKIKAYT and check out Taylor Brands. I have put the link in the description below uh, and there you can go and have fun with their tool and you know create a website and a logo and get your email and all that um, and just check it out. All right, uh, I hope you have a wonderful day and you can come and say hi. I'm over at KUTAWAKIKA on Instagram and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye!